Hi everyone, it's me, Brad. This week has almost felt like a fever dream for me. It started with me losing an appendix and then ended up you guys getting a new product called the Steam Deck announced. What a crazy week. Literally about a month ago, I made a video called Valve Index 2 Goes Wireless. And literally everything I said and predicted in that video came true in the form of a handheld. If you haven't watched that video yet, literally go back to that video. I'm sure I'll link it somewhere, probably up here or there. And it literally says a lot of the in detail stuff of what the Valve Index 2 compute unit will have. But since the Steam Deck is announced and it pretty much proves that my predictions have some moral authority, is that the right word? Let's go over some stuff again because this is actually a major announcement for really the future of VR and more importantly, Valve hardware. Now, first of all, for those who do not know, for some reason, the Steam Deck is Valve's first entry into, well, the handheld space. It's kind of like a console, but really calling it a console is sort of an insult because this is the most open platform device we have for portability. It's basically a Linux PC built into this tiny little form factor. And it's awesome. As predicted, Valve was not making a brand new Steam store for ARM or mobile-based platforms. They stuck with the idea of using an x86 chip or AMD SoC to be able to allow Windows applications or Linux applications to run perfectly. It's actually crazy because I was literally working on a video for a month to showcase the pretty much the state of VR in Linux right now because I know Valve has been working so hard on Proton, which for those who do not know, Proton is basically the compatibility layer to allow Windows apps or Windows games to work on Linux, which is the Steam Deck is running on and what the Valve Index 2 compute unit will also run on. Basically, everything we see in the Steam Deck will carry over to a Valve Index 2 compute unit. More on that in a minute. We got to talk a little bit about the Steam Deck more before we can talk about the Index 2 or whatever. So the Steam Deck is honestly a powerhouse for really the shape and size of the device itself. While the display and some of the other aspects might not seem impressive to some people, the actual innards and SoC they're using, which was pretty much custom built by AMD for Valve to use in this device, are pretty insane. It uses Zen 2 and RDNA 2 all together in this tiny little form factor at 15 watts. That's very low power and makes x86 seem pretty incredible that it's going to be able to basically be a tiny PC, not in a pocket, but in the case. Getting a bunch of users excited for an open platform like Linux while also giving the full compatibility of Windows will be amazing in the long term because really we're kind of reliant all the time on Windows and Windows has a great advantage, but I would say openness and control over your software and hardware is probably not one of them. Due to the fact that Valve is so committed into this openness fact form factor allows us to do a lot of crazy things when the Steam Deck comes out. Not only just run games, but really mod the entire hardware and software inside it to do literally whatever we want. In fact, even the drivers that are running the AMD GPU in this device are also open source. So literally, if you want this thing to run VR, which I will talk more about in a minute, literally people in the community can come together and work on a hard GPU just purely designed for running VR. There's also the benefit, the fact that this is an open platform, not just for like the software and hardware, but the stores as well. Obviously, this is a Steam device and it heavily relies on the Steam store. But Valve themselves even said that if anyone else wants to develop a store for Linux or Steam OS 3, they can. They are not going to lock down anyone. So while a lot of people are going to obviously purchase stuff on Steam and play stuff on the handheld, even if Epic Games Launcher or itch.io, which actually already supports Linux, you can literally access VR content or non-VR content from any store on this device. This is big because when this compute unit and software, SteamOS 3, but specialized for VR, reaches the compute unit for the Valve Index 2, the same thing will happen. So despite being a Valve device, when the Valve Index 2 has a compute unit inside, any store or anyone with the freedom to run any application from any store will be able to do so if they really care about that standalone component. It's literally kind of the opposite of what Facebook is doing. Facebook is very big on trying to 
kind of go the Apple route, only allowing their store on their platform and really trying to curb this idea of side loaded stores or anything else in the future. They've allowed SideQuest to exist, but really with App Labs, they're obviously trying to get people away from the idea. And it makes sense because they are taking a huge loss on the Quest 2. And while they're getting a lot of that back with data collection and selling, another way they're getting it back is also through software sales. But the interesting thing is Valve is also probably taking a huge loss on per unit of hardware sales of the Steam Deck. This is probably the most aggressive hardware pricing we've seen from Valve. Gabe Noel even said that this is basically painful to sell at this price. While the Valve Index is probably being sold closer to the cost per unit that Valve is doing in the hopes to push VR, it's not enough. $1,000 for a two-year-old full kit of headset, VR gear, blah blah blah, whatever you want to call it, is still very expensive in today's market. And with the Quest 2 selling at $300 starting probably at 128 gigabytes very soon of this video, it's very hard to compete in today's VR market. So I hope whatever insane subsidization that Valve is doing with the Steam Deck, we will see in future VR products from them. But not only should Valve learn a lesson from their subsidization practices here, they should learn and they probably are learning from the actual hardware they're putting in this device. Valve is very, very excited to show off these. These thumbsticks behind me. They are brand new and are very different from the thumbsticks we even see from the index controllers, which are known and heavily complained about because they are prone to fail and drift very fast. But Game Null and the rest of Valve has been very confident saying that they really solved the problem with drift and it should last people at least a lot longer than the Valve Index controller thumbsticks do. And these thumbsticks actually do the same thing. They have capacitive touch and are literally probably what we're going to see in the next controller iteration for the Valve Index 2. Now let's talk about actual getting this thing to run with VR. When they were asked by IGN if it could run VR, they basically said that they are not expecting people or expecting themselves to get the performance to reach the VR level. But they did not say it's impossible. They basically said they're not targeting that performance goal. However, due to the fact this has a USB-C and you can literally plug it to any sort of dock that you want and plug in DisplayPort, USB, whatever you would want, you know people like me are going to be racing to be the first ones to get VR running at a consistent frame rate. Again, this is a very open hardware design with Philip head screws built all over the device so you can actually open it up and void your warranty if you want. You can probably overclock it, whether or not that is recommended. You can probably do incredible things. I wouldn't be surprised if we even see a video someday of someone using liquid nitrogen to overclock and cool a Steam Deck just for fun. So again, I would like to reiterate, while this device is not a VR focused device, it sheds a light on the future of what will be possible for a VR standalone compute unit. And the actual ability to run VR is sort of there for anyone that really wants to try it. Now there's one more important aspect I really need to touch on. I talked about Proton and like a little bit about how this runs on Linux. And yeah, this is SteamOS 3.0 a brand new update to SteamOS. And as I said in my Valve Index 2 goes wireless video, I predicted that a new SteamOS would come out with some drastic changes. And here it is. Not only that, I also predicted that a new big picture mode would come out. And again, here it is. Everything, if you go through the entire software page for the Steam Deck, you literally see a hint of everything that will be coming to SteamVR 2.0 in terms of UI. SteamVR 2.0 is something that's been hinted and promised about by Valve for a couple of years now. We know that SteamVR is really in a dangerous place in terms of just being a bad UI with a crappy keyboard, but literally all those things are literally hinted and showcased in this website. I really hope we'll be able to actually access SteamOS 3.0 very soon for us to download and try out ourselves before the Steam Deck comes out. And not only that, maybe SteamVR 2.0 is very close on the horizon including that brand new keyboard that they are literally showcasing, not only just the keyboard, but a cosmetic for the keyboard as well. Good old Valve and selling hats for things such as keyboards. That's, that's so Valve. So really, I don't have much more to say except I am determined to say I am completely right on with all my predictions I made in my last Valve Index 2 video. And this device is proof of all the work that in R&D that Valve is putting into this device 
will carry over to a Valve Index 2 compute unit that is not really focused on standalone. Valve is very focused on PC VR, but there is so many really good things that having a compute unit in a VR headset does, even for users who have an insane PC like I do. There's even some hints in the Steam VR API to something called Prism, which is also being hinted at in the Proton version of Steam VR API. And Prism is basically a brand new feature set relating to hardware and software, and it's a completely new layer to Steam VR. We don't really know what it is yet. It could honestly be this partner multi-rendering system that I was talking about. Anyway, everyone, that is pretty much all the basics I have to say about Steam Deck. There's honestly a lot more. I can go on literally for hours about this. So maybe I'll do a live stream on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash sadlacebradley for like a live Q&A. Or you can just leave a bunch of questions in the comments section because I want to answer as many questions you have about this and how it relates to VR as much as I can. This is a big moment for Valve and really what Valve's features hardware will have. This is a lot bigger than even people are saying. This is not a Nintendo Switch competitor. This is, in fact, a Windows competitor. And it's big, let me tell you. Anyway, that's it. I hope you liked the video. Please hit like, subscribe. And um, if my appendix is out there in some surgeon's office right now watching this video, I'm sorry. Please come back to me. I'm sorry. Bye.